it's day three of the 2020 Challenge Tour Grand Final. The sun is out here at Tee Golf and Country Club and it's Alex Kanapa who sits atop the leaderboard on 11 under par. Can he continue his scintillating form after that second round 63 or will one of the chasing pack make their move? Yes, just 36 holes left of the road to Mallorca season before we crown both the grand final champion and the season long rankings number one. And how good it feels to be on this beautiful Mediterranean island at this wonderful venue at Tee Golf and Country Club, playing host to our contenders all here to get their hands on the final piece of silverware this year. We're just a short drive from the Mallorcan capital, Parma. It's an undulating layout. And Anthony Wall, a change of conditions out there today. Yes, absolutely, Dom. The wind will pick up this afternoon and a good score will be hard to find. One or two tucked away pins. Blue skies out there today. It was all a little bit grey and drizzly yesterday, but it was a good day for Matt Ford, the Englishman who's fourth on the road to Mallorca rankings and looking to stay inside the top five to get some starts on the European Tour next season. Beautiful tee shot at the par 3 six. One of five birdies on the card. He shot a round of 67 to lie seven under par inside the top five. Enrico Donito playing uphill at the 17th. He raced home with three birdies in the last six for a 68. And that moved him to seven under. A tie for a fourth going into the weekend. All smiles for the man from Rome. And not too bad for Nicholas Norgard Muller from Denmark as well. He nearly canned it for an eagle two at 14. It bounced back off the bottom of the flag, stick to there. Then he hold the birdie part as well. Good back nine for him. He's at seven under par as well. He's 43rd on the road to Mallorca. Needs a big finish this weekend. Bjorn Helgen. Two here yesterday at 12. And this one bounded all the way up pretty close. He would knock that in. Signed for a 67 and he would be nine under. Sitting pretty. In a share of second place alongside Richard Mansell, the Englishman who was locked away in his hotel room for 10 days after a positive COVID test. Came out on Tuesday, flew here and he's flown out of the blocks. 66, 67 so far. So, as I say, he's at nine under par as well. Alexander Kanapa had a tough shot on 18. Short-sided himself, but read it beautifully. And that one dropped in. Wonderful 63 to lead at 11 under. And what a finish. Birdie, birdie, eagle for a man who's already won twice on the Challenge Tour in his career, albeit four years ago. It is Kanapa by two from Bjorn Helgren and Richard Mansell. Among those at six under par, Tyler Coivisto, the American school teacher who uh, won the Northern Ireland Open in his very first Challenge Tour start. He had a poor front nine yesterday, but he came home nicely, rescued his round. 69, and he's still very much in the competition. He's with Kit. Tyler, you were two under par for the tournament with six holes to go in your second round. How big were those four birdies you picked up? Uh, those were really good to get. Um, my brother Mark is on the bag this week, and um, we just kind of dis had a little chat after that double, and um, I was able to just kind of bounce back and, and keep fighting, and we just kind of wanted to put ourselves in, in contention here on the weekend and see what we can do. Five shots back at the halfway stage. Do you need to take a more aggressive mentality now? No, I don't think so. I think I just do what I, I have been doing all along. Um, there's holes that you can be aggressive on and then some that you got to really um, plot your way around and, and choose wisely. So Great stuff. Hope it pulls off for you today. Yeah, thank you. Now let's check out the early action. Well, among those going along very nicely, thank you. The Welshman, David Boot. His approach at the first, last man in the field this week, and taking advantage as well. A birdie there would take him to six under par. Needs to win this week, really, if he's going to climb inside the top five and grab some European tour starts next season. Yeah, Santiago Tario laid up at the second par five, quite a short hole. And that's actually his first birdie at the hole all week, and that move him to seven under. This is Christian Crow Johannesson, shot a 65 yesterday to vault up the leaderboard. And a birdie there. 
At the second hole, the par five takes him to seven under as well, alongside Tario. Down the left-hand side at the first for Nicholas Moller. Never easy coming out of the wispy stuff. It's a front pin location also, so a tough one to judge. But a perfect start, and that would move him to eight under also. Happy with that. Back to the first tee. Final group getting underway. Here is Mansell. Quite an open tee shot, Tom. A little bit down the hill. Not much really to worry about. Bunker down the right. He's third on the road to Mallorca standings, but where he is right at the moment in a share of second place, Mansell projected to top the season-long road to Mallorca to climb above Marcel Schneider and Pep Angles. Good swing from Helgen. Picks the tee up pretty quick, so clearly likes it. Yeah, three, four, five, big bounces. Anyone who gets past the bunker really leaves himself only a pitch. That's one of the longest we've seen so far this week. Perfect. On and on it bounds. And here's our leader, Knapper. Quite a long swing. Probably does rely on timing a little. He knows how to get it done. He's been around a long time now. Good, strong player. And it's perfectly in the centre of the fairway. He's a long way behind, certainly, Helgren, isn't he? Didn't quite get the bounce forward, but still in pretty good shape. Now, David Boot up ahead at the third. Quite a short par four. Second shot's up the hill. Pins on a bit of a ledge today on the left-hand side. He's just judged that perfectly. What a shot. Well, he made birdie at one. He didn't get a birdie there at the uh, par five second hole. But an excellent opportunity there for Boot to go two under through the first three. Back to the first and the second for Knapper. 15th in the road to Mallorca rankings. Just about 80 yards away. Good number, really, for a lob wedge. And then you see the control keeping it on the fairway and that's pretty well judged considering I can't imagine he played from there in practice still no win to speak of Mansell just in the first cut so this is just a fraction harder but probably his angle is better he's almost trying to run this one a little bit more off the front oh a lot of spin must have struck that beautifully fine shot he does like the start here he has gone birdie birdie on Thursday and Friday. Can he do it again out there today? Heldren last to play. Longest of the three, Dom, here. Important with the short ones to keep it short in the backswing and really accelerate through. Possibly almost a little bit too close there with a the front pin. It looks nice and relaxed. Good shot, mind. Up to the third. We saw the approach shot. Surely a birdie for David Boot. Played in the 2017 Walker Cup for turning professional, and that is a good start. Two under through three, he moves it to seven under par, which is four behind our leader, Knapper. Third shot for Matt Ford. That's his game, that wedge in his hand. He'll be very good with those clubs. He'll be using a measuring device or two. Oh, another one that hits the pin. We've seen a few of those this week. But unlucky, if anything. He's done well, hasn't he? Fourth in the road to Mallorca standings. Trying to stay inside that top five. Helgren for the birdie at one. But just outside that sort of magic 12-foot number. Just eases down towards the right. Easily done. Quite a straightforward first hole, so you are looking to birdie that one in truth. Christian Crow Johannesson into the third. And another good one into the third. Playing it past and spinning it back. Such a valuable practice round. You get to see those sort of things and you, you chart those in your books. As we look up the hill to Alexander Kanapa here. Good chance here. He needs to be aggressive with this one. Well, that was never online. 
Did bobble coming out of the fringe. Cut it beautifully yesterday. That was not his best. So it's a par at the first. Stays 11 under. And still leading the way after that wonderful 63 yesterday. Left below right for Matt Ford. His grip, putting grip. Eyes over the ball. It's been a good putter. Just see there, a bit of grain. Just tucked that left early on. What causes that then, Anthony? Just a slight miss strike, maybe. Catching it maybe a little bit thin, if anything. Just get an early bob, which doesn't roll quite purely enough early on, and it just loses the early swing. This part of the world, there is a bit of grain on the greens, but not too much this time of year. You can just see the different patchiness on the greens there in the colour. Rather ho-hum par there for Matt Ford, having hit the pin with his approach shot to Christopher Blomstrand, the Swede. Nicely done. He goes to five under. Another very experienced player riding high on the leaderboard. I like this fella's game. Well, has really taken advantage of the par fives this week and he's pretty much at the top of the leaderboard, so watch out the weekend. That's very well done. Good birdie. He moves to nine under. Yeah, well done him. Blomstrand, by the way, made a double bogey at the second, the par five, so he's fighting his way back to Johansson at the third. Not a problem at all. Two in a row for the Norwegian, so he advances to eight under, and he's making his way nicely up that leaderboard. Quite a soft start, the first four or five holes. So we've seen many birdies as Mansell rolls that one in again. And that's three in a row, three days running. He certainly likes the start here, doesn't he? That moves him to 10 under par and within one of Alexander Knapper at the top. Then it's Moller and Helgren and Johannes three behind at eight under par. The leaders are walking down the second fairway behind me, a par five, plenty of scoring opportunities. Join us after the break to see how the rest of their rounds unfold. Day three of the Challenge Tour Grand Final from Tee Golf and Country Club. We'll get back to the action very shortly. First, a chance for you to feast your eyes on this beautiful Mediterranean island where the road to Mallorca season comes to a conclusion for the second straight year. For us, it's fundamental that the Challenge Tour and the Grand Final is here in Mallorca, as it allows us to showcase our golf courses as well as the island and be capable to demonstrate that we are in a position to host events with maximum security. And furthermore, that we have an island ready and safe to host events, but also to welcome tourists and to be able to reopen the island for the tourism season season in the best possible way. Well, no birdie at the par five, second for Matt Ford, but at the third, how good is this? Wonderful stuff from the Englishman, and he gets his first birdie of the day and moves along to eight under par and into the thick of it. Into the thick of it indeed. Now Santiago Tario managed to birdie the second Real outside chance here. And it just drops in the front door. And he also birdied the seventh, so a great start for the Spaniard. Moving on to nine under par. Just two off the lead. David Boot. This is to go three under through four. What a hot start from the Welshman. He gets it to eight under. There are some chances at these early holes, sporting the nice Movember moustache as well. Now, Canapa missed the chance for Burley at the first. Just squeezes by there as well. So two pass to start for our leader. And two good chances gone. Even with his experience, maybe one or two nerves out there today. I'm sure he'll settle down soon. Up to the third, Mansell's third shot splashing out of the sand. 
it was a birdie birdie start by the way for the Englishman again here at Tee Golf and Country Club he did not hold that putt for par and a bogey five means that Mansell drops back to ten under one behind Clapper and it's Boot Tario and Nicholas Moller All pass so far for Alexander Knapper. Here he is at the par 3 six, slightly uphill. Breeze just beginning to get up a little bit. Yes, absolutely. The conditions are changing. So the course will play, no question, harder. Birdies will be harder to come by. It's quite a cold northerly breeze. And the tees are quite sheltered, so picking the wind isn't easy with such a cloudless day. Mansell. Well, I'm not sure if he was distracted or just looking around for the breeze and thinking he didn't quite see it that way. Not his best iron shot, though. He's been pretty good all week with the irons. Maybe just out of sync a little bit. Sometimes you turn the shoulders a little bit early on the way down. Ball fans out right. Now, Helgren, he struggled early on with his iron play. Went to the range early on Thursday and Friday and felt like he was somewhere nearer where he needs to be. This is downwind, this hole today. Up the hill at number six. That's a good shot. Get it all the way on top. He's been around for a while, Bjorn Elgren. Not one to date on the Challenge Tour. As we go up to Nicholas Moller, the Dane at the seventh. Short par four, tight dog leg. Runs in the same direction as the sixth. It's a club long, so that's also downwind. So maybe just slightly I'm misjudging that one. And that's going to be an interesting pitch back. Just a steady climb. Over to the par three ninth. You play over water, over a valley. It's actually tee forward a little bit today, so it's only just over 190 yards here for David Boot. We actually watched a few early on, and picking the club here was quite difficult. Wind is definitely swirling on this different tee today. Proving quite tough for the players to judge that one. Long range birdie putt for Richard Mansell. Putting into the shadow dump is never easy. But that's well judged, as good as you ever do, really. Just get it inside that three, four foot range. Take the pressure off when you've hit such a poor iron shot. Look at this. Yeah, tough one. You've got to just make sure you, if you are going for the parachute shot, you've got to hit through it. No real choice. He obviously had the bunker slightly in his way. Could have maybe gone right, but probably would have left a similar distance. That one's coming up the hill, so an easier putt there. They are definitely firming up these greens. Here's Tario at the ninth, splashing out of the greenside bunker. And he's left himself with a lot of work to secure his par. No drop shots on the cards so far today for the Spaniard, whose girlfriend, Noelia, is caddying for him this week. He said she plays a big part in his game, up to 80%, he said, of what he achieves out there is down to her. Just slightly out of position here at seven for Matt Ford. But you see there, played that beautifully. Real soft pair of hands and the, the face just hold the angle through the shot, but kept the speed up, and that was beautifully judged. Gets away with his part. Back to the sixth and a chance here for Knapper. Remember, all pars to this point so far, and he missed a couple of good chances early on. Of an under read these when you're in the shadow. That's tracking. Yeah, well done. Walks it in. So his day's off and running. 12 under. Opens up a two shot lead at the top. Here's Boot to get to 10 under at the ninth. T shot's probably where he was aiming, really. Centre of the green, leave himself under the hole. There's not much behind this pin on the left. A little bit tentative. It's quite a steep climb, though, to that pin today. Now, this is a slick one for Helgren at the sixth. It might not look it, but it, it's downhill and quick. Yeah, and coming through the shadows we've talked about before, it's tough to really judge the pace and the slope. And then you see he just trundles on, and that's outside the leather. That's no gimme. Well, from Helgren at six, let's go to Moller. 
for par at seven. Yeah, this wouldn't be what he was expecting for par with a wedge in your hand. Just inside the marker, you see, yeah, well just catches you. the left side. Yeah. And that'll feel like a birdie. Yeah, keeps the car neat and tidy. No drop shots after the birdie, birdie start for the Dane. Who had an excellent season on the Nordic League. Something like 13 top tens in the season. I'm afraid it's going to be a drop shot for Tario. Tough left below, right grip there. The left hand seems to almost block the right. I do wonder on the right to left putt whether he actually can release it as much as you need. He's almost cutting it into the hole. He falls back to eight under par. As David Boot just tidies up for his par at nine. And that is a good outward journey for the Welshman. Four birdies, no drop shots. Excellent stuff. Return par putt for Helgen. No birdies to this point. They also doubled the fifth. So going the wrong direction. Stay seven under. Got some work to do. Mansell from just a yard or so. Yeah, no problem at all. Short walk to the seventh tee, the dog leg. And as they head there, we'll check in on the leaderboard, which shows that Alexander Knapper has a two shot lead over Richard Mansell. Boot and Muller are three shots in arrears. And we'll have more from Tee Golf and Country Club and the Challenge Tour Grand Final when we come back. The breeze is freshening on day three of this year's Challenge Tour Grand Final from Tee Golf and Country Club. Some are prospering, though, including the Englishman Harry Ellis, who won the Amateur Championship in 2017. Here he is at the 11th. That takes him three under on his round and to six under for the championship. Our first look of Andre Lisa from the Czech Republic. Managed to get it out in 32, three under. And another birdie at 11. No drop so far. He moves to seven under. Ellis, Lisa and Robin Peterson from Sweden all playing in the same group and all pulling each other along very nicely out there today. Often happens on a Saturday. It's quite nice to get three playing well together. Plenty of smiles before the pressure of Sunday. That's a birdie for Sweden's Peterson at the 14th and he moves to six under par. It's a harder day to score today on Saturday. The wind picking up. Back of the green for Muller. Hit it in two, the par five, downwind. And a good birdie there. He's a strong player, isn't he, Anthony? He certainly is. He's not really been playing the par fives that well this week. But he's still there. Not so good progress, I'm afraid, for Bjorn Helgren, who double bogeyed the fifth. He dropped a shot at the eighth, but Bounce back birdie at nine as well from distance. So he returns to seven under par and he needs a big back nine. Ninth par three, quite a tough hole. Par putt here for Mansell. And sadly that will be a second drop shot of the round. Just needs to steady himself. Yeah, he's back to nine under par where he started the day. This final group not really making the progress they would have hoped at the moment. But remember, tricky conditions. Knapper. This is for par, and I'm afraid that is his first dropped shot today. He bogeyed the tenth as well to fall back to ten under par. And at that tenth hole, Richard Mansell made a triple bogey real struggle for the Englishman. He's in trouble at 11 as well. Semi-plug lie at the par five. And I can tell you he failed to get up and down. So another dropped shot. He falls back to five under, which is five shots off the pace. 
needs to turn things around and he needs to turn them around pretty quickly. He's drifted out of contention. It's Knapper who leads from Moller at the moment and Lisa going along well. Andre, how do you assess your round to this point? I mean, no mistakes so far, so pretty well done. Had a, had a one like really good pot on seven, so it kept me going. How satisfying is it to keep a clean card on a day that's got increasingly blustery and tricky out here? I mean, I didn't expect that win because we played like first, let's say five holes with, it, with no win. Mm -hmm. And in the second, it started to blow like a lot. So it changed a little bit, but I'm kind of doing all right. <laughs> How pleased are you that you being a little bit of an earlier starter haven't had all of the wind like the late groups are going to have? I mean, it helps, especially on the holes like three, four, five, six, and seven, mm -hmm. because these holes we play like with no wind mm -hmm. mostly, so it helps on these holes. Then it just like like that, so <laughs> and it's going to increase, I think. Fantastic round, finish it off. Thank you. Two holes to go for him, seven holes from home. Alexander Knapper at the tough 12th. Yeah, tees up a little bit, but it's still 191 yards on a bit of a crosswind from left to right, water down the right. Looked like a fully committed swing. Yeah, they're often the ones you're trying to almost turn them into the breeze. And that's job well done. Long way from the pin, but really that's all you're looking to do. Make a par and get out of there. Yeah, don't mess with the penalty area. Mansell must be reeling a little bit. Yeah, not really seeing this coming. Five drop shots in three holes. Looks a bit late on that one. The face is going to be open. And with that left to right wind, that's going to be wet. Well, this is quite tough to watch, isn't it? It's all falling apart, I'm afraid, out there today for Richard Mansell. Needs to gather himself, steady the ship. Yeah, that's exactly right. All about confidence in your own ability. And with these changing conditions, as we see Moller here, almost on the first fairway, hit driver off the tee, so playing back into the breeze. And with these changing conditions, like we saw with Mantle, you've got to take your pars and move on. It's a completely different afternoon out there now. Nearly made a two, nearly hold it, didn't he, from the fairway of 14 yesterday. He'll do well to make his par from there. Drop zone for the Englishman here. And at this point, your head is scrambled. You're really struggling to know how you're going to get into the clubhouse with a decent score. He's made up for it there, but he will be dropping a shot at the 12th. Up to 14th, third shot now for Moller. He's kept the bogeys off the card most of the week, Moller. Just a little bit tentative back into the breeze. Back over to 12, Knapper. Outside chance of a birdie, but a couple of putts would be absolutely fine. Yeah, you can see the wind there on the flag blowing towards the waters. It's quite a quick one on the green so it is into the grain and now it just drops down grain as it gets a bit lighter so changing conditions out there also on the greens not just in the air Andre Lisa birdied the 17th to get to eight under he's got a chance here at 18 so this is for a birdie birdie finish I didn't know whether he was walking it in or not, but uh, clearly not. I think he realised as soon as he did it, yeah, shake of the head, hadn't given it enough. Now just a return putt for our leader, Kanapa from Germany. Yep, solid, good two putts. Should be the, the way to play the back nine. Just get in and get out of there as many pars as possible. Muller. Hold a good one, didn't he, for par earlier at seven. You can see the trees behind really blowing now. Yeah, that's important. You can see that. He's obviously gone for the green downwind and got out of position. Andre Lisa for par at 18. And a bogey free round of 66. That really is good stuff Thank from you. the man who won a couple of weeks ago. In the Andalusia Challenge de España. 66 for his playing partner, Robin Peterson, as well, with a birdie birdie finish. They're both at eight under par. Let's hear from them with Kit. Robin, how happy are you with that third round effort? 
Uh, yeah, extremely happy. Uh, the conditions today are really tough, uh, mm -hmm. at least compared to the first couple of rounds we played. Um, and so, yeah, five under, um, if you had told me that before the round today, I definitely would have taken it. What was it that you did so well to put that score together? Uh, well, keeping the ball, in, ball uh, mostly in the fairway mm -hmm. here is, uh, is really important. The greens are pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously with the, um, uh, with the win today, um, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just trying to hit as many greens as possible. And mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to have a few be close and uh, I knocked those in. Andre, how good was it to go bogey free in those conditions today? I mean, it definitely helps, mm -hmm. especially I could be easily like four over after five holes. I made mm -hmm. some really spectacular up and downs there, send safes and mm -hmm. all this stuff, holding some three meter spot for par. Mm -hmm. So that kept the momentum going. Mm -hmm. Then I made a birdie seven, six, seven. I was like three under in the time and I was like, mm -hmm. OK, that turned around nicely. Then the wind started picking up and I was still keep hitting good shots, especially into the green. I wasn't that good from the tee, but into the green I was like very precise. A chance for Lisa to win for the second time in three weeks and to win big here at the Challenge Tour Grand Final. More from us when we return. Challenging breezy conditions on day three for the latest starters in the Challenge Tour Grand Final. Alexander Knapper from Germany continues to lead the way. There he is, one clear of Muller as he wanders to the 16th tee. The 16th is a stunning little par four. It's only 379 yards on the card, but you have to be accurate. I'm stood on a cliff top that flanks all the way up the left-hand side. Anything missing right, and you trundle down a slope into the trees and the shrubs, there's no future in there. Your second shot, well, you'll have a wedge in your hands, and it's to that green behind me. A couple of devilish pin positions to look out for as well. Anything at the front, you can easily spin your ball back off the putting surface. And there's a really naughty one back right on a thin slither of green just behind that bunker. Not sure if I'll use that spot for Sunday. We'll wait and see. Here is Kanapa. Just coming out of the semi. He's got some good action on it. And he'll have a pretty good look at Birdie there. Let's take a look at Kanapa's swing. The man in charge right now. Good setup. Neutral ball position. Good grip. Makes a very full turn. A little bit long in the backswing for me. Probably got about a six iron in his hand, but he's very much loaded. A little bit cramped there. But I have to say, it's serving him well this week so far. And he's certainly the man to beat. Hunting a third Challenge Tour title and his first win on the Challenge Tour for some four years. This is Matt Ford at the 17th. Dropped three shots in five holes at the start of the back nine, but that's right over the flag stick. Chance there for him to move to six under. Been a tough day. For Donito, had some back spasms, some neck spasms also. Had a bit of treatment, but he's hanging in there. Bogey's at 11 and 12 on the back nine. Yeah, not quite as smiley as we've seen him so far this week, the man from Rome. Here's Muller out of position at 17. Ball above his feet, so this one normally would go left. So you can almost kind of try and fade the ball from left to right to counteract that slope. Job done there, coming out of the rough. Birdie's hard to come by on this uh, back nine so far. His last gain was at the par five, eleventh. He'll have that boat to join Knapper at ten under. That's assuming Knapper doesn't hold this one at sixteen. We saw he had plenty of control out of the rough, bit of spin. So outside chance here, back into the sun, which is never easy late in the day. But that's good to see, nice and positive. Come on, Richard. Still in the lead. So, for a share of the lead, Nicholas Moller. Got a line around the middle of his ball all the way. It's becoming more and more popular in the world of golf these days. Helping people line up. Even a good tip when you practice to do it before you go out, even if you're not comfortable with it. Helps you learn to aim correctly. 
poor old Richard Mansell, I'm afraid, has had a shocker out there today. He dropped seven shots in five holes around the turn. Is there a glimmer of light? Try. It was a good try, but no birdie at 16 for the Englishman. Tough lesson. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Now, I thought Matt Ford would have a good day once the wind picked up, but he's only had one birdie out there. This is for another at 17. A few drop shots, there you go. Obviously not hold very many today. It's normally a telltale sign when you lift both hands up. Still smiling, though. Yeah, you know, one. I'm sure it's more than that, Matt. De Nito for the birdie at 17. Yeah, well done. So he advances to four under par. And if the wind picks up tomorrow, you never know. So these are all important birdie putts. There's no point giving any away. Now, this is an interesting one for Johansson. Not quite sure how he's ended up over here, but he's going left or right of that tree trunk. But just needs to be careful with water behind the green. Almost planning off the cush of the path. That's probably as good as he could have done. If he hit it any harder than that, he probably would have been taken on the penalty area behind the green. So trying to do his best. <laughs> Doing well to get back in play, Dom. He was careful down that slippery slope. Knapper for par. Well done. Good confidence builder with a couple to go. Keeps him at 10 under. He looks reasonably comfortable, doesn't he? He is one over par, but it's not easy out there, as we've seen. Stays one ahead, two to play. This is the 17th, and Kanapa, a bit of a wild drive. Yeah, a good 50 or so from the fairway. The only real rough we've seen, but it's pretty lush out there. It's been overseeded, probably, and that's a fine recovery. Bunker down the right, so he was looking up the left-hand side. Didn't have far to go, but he really had to muscle it out, didn't he? Johannesson's fourth shot now at 18. One of the hardest shots in golf. Trying to pick it clean, keep your height on the downswing, so you do thin it, but you don't want to overdo it. And that's, in truth, pretty good. A little bit unlucky, if anything, didn't really release. Let's have a look at getting up and down. That's the main thing after being in so much trouble. The Norwegian playing in the same group as Christopher Blomstrand from Sweden, who's ninth on the road to Mallorca. This is an eagle putt. Tough one to judge coming up and over that ridge. It's all about this bit here. Before we see when there's too much pace, they overborrow. In truth, that was pretty difficult. Back into the sun also. Bjorn Helgren coming up the 17th. He's found the fairway, unlike Knapper. Yeah, really perfect angle to move some dirt and try and get it in there close. Drop three shots, so he's trying to get one back. He might even get two back here. Yeah, what a shot. Take some good vibes into Sunday. I always think it's so important, Don. The last three or four holes on a Saturday if the day hasn't been going your way, to so really stick to your task. You never know what might happen on Sunday. Johannesson for the par at 18 for a round of 69. I'm afraid that is going to be drop shot number three today for Christian Crow Johannesson. Four birdies on the card as well. And he will go into the final round at seven under par. Giving himself a chance despite that disappointing, a disappointing finish. Now, birdie putt, the last for Blomstrand. Stay positive, hit through the line, left to right, just hangs on. It's three birdies in his last four for a good 69. He's very much in the hunt, even with a double bogey at the second. That's well played to stay in it. Quite a few double bogeys today. That just shows you how strong the wind has been. Green is cleared. This is Nicholas Moller's second. He's hit that low.
It's a golf shot, no question about it. But is it going to hang on? Doesn't look like it will do. It's quite strange to hit that one so low. That's a good miss, though. Live permitted, it's not a bad spot to be. We've seen a few three putts from the front of the green, so getting past it's not a bad way of doing it. Knapper for Birdie at 17. See the wind whipping around his trousers, so it's still out there late in the day. Well, that's what he was doing yesterday. Holding putts for fun. So he's back to 11 under where he started the day. He has re-established his two-shot lead at the top. Excellent stuff. Not a difficult shot. Just for me, balance was a problem there, really. He wasn't really set to play that. You couldn't really tell from the setup whether it was an upslope or a downslope. He'll be disappointed, won't he? Nicholas Moller. Helgren taps in for his birdie at 17, so he goes to five under par. Pretty wretched day for both he and Richard Mansell in that final group, but looking for a strong finish. Yeah, you can see from his ball position, for me, too much in the middle of his stance, he's stabbing at it rather than brushing it. Ball needs to be outside your right foot off an upslope out of that amount of grass. It's all about the strike around the green. It's really, in truth, not that difficult if your setup is correct. Now, can he get out with a par? It's one given away, but at least he hasn't dropped one, Dom. Three birdies, just the one drop shot. That came at the par three ninth, and it's a round of 69 for Nicholas Moller. Nine under, two behind at the moment. Knapper still has the par five 18th to come. He's actually driven it wildly off the tee into the trees, hit it down to here. This is his third shot at 18. Ball slightly above his feet, but not much. So really should be looking to just turn this one over from right to left. And that's probably the widest wedge he's hit this year, I would suggest. And as we've seen, that's not a given two putt. There you can see a good 35, 40 feet right of the hole. Yeah, apart from the hole putt at 17, it's all been a little bit scrappy over the back nine for Alexander Knapper. Yeah, it's all about how you deal with changing conditions. This man's been chugging along quite nicely. You can see they're all about the strike with the chip, and he played that just perfectly, nice and shallow through the ball. Not too much grass between club and ball, and that was beautifully played from Helgen. Yeah, he'll wander up. He's going to tap in. That's a birdie-birdie finish, and despite the fact that he's shot 74 today and slid back, it is a nice way to round things off, take a little bit of mental positivity into tomorrow's final round. We've seen this once or twice this afternoon. Tough one. Once it gets over the ridge, Canapa here needs to be careful. You were saying, Dom, just getting a little bit ragged towards the end. Maybe the tiredness setting with the cold northerly breeze. And there's plenty left to do there. Now, yeah, there's a good aggressive stroke. Plenty of pace in this one. Otherwise, it would die away on him. He's hit it well. Yeah, that's unlucky. That's often the case when things go a bit ragged. Doesn't quite go your way at the end. So that's disappointing finish for our leader. Yes, a bogey at the last. So he falls back to 10 under par. One ahead of Moller. Nothing really has gone right today for Richard Mansell. Apart from a good start, birdie, birdie. That's so many drop shots out there. That's that horrible run around the turn. Top to shot at 17. It's a birdie at 18, but from two behind at the start of the day, he is seven in arrears heading into Sunday. It is Germany's Alexander Knapper who will take a one-shot lead into Sunday. Ten under par, though. You're atop the leaderboard, a shot clear. What's your strategy for tomorrow's final round? Um just stick to my strategy basically I mean I can play a good round tomorrow and I'm just looking for um, maybe getting get it going a little bit better than today and then I'll be in a good shape well battled today thank you well battled indeed and if he can win tomorrow he will win by the narrowest of margins the season-long road to Mallorca rankings as well
Tea Golf and Country Club really showed its teeth today. The wind got up and the players had to battle hard. Alex Knapper, he maintained his lead, but a one over par round and everything is getting very tight. There are 14 players within five. We're guaranteed drama. So join us tomorrow for the final round of the 2020 Challenge Tour Grand Final.